tonight we're going to be talking about the law of Dharma. Every person, I've worked with so many thousands of people over my career and or maybe millions and I, the thing I noticed that's sort of a universal issue problem if you will is that people many times will not feel fulfilled. They will feel like they're go, doing their job, they're doing a decent job at their work, they've got a good salary, maybe they've got status in their career but they're not having fun and they're not in enjoyment and they don't feel fulfilled with it. The thing that we miss out oftentimes in this culture, in our Western culture, is that we will tend to choose a job or profession based on the amount of money we can make or the amount of status we can have in the community. And the thing we miss out on is that we have a unique talent and we have a unique ability that we've come into the world to express and it has nothing to do really with money and with status although that might be included, um, that we forget to focus on what it is we love to do. What do we love to do that, that we can lose ourselves in it, that we can forget what time it is, that we can be doing it for hours and just think that it's a minute that's gone by. So um, what we want to do, that's what we're going to be focusing on tonight, is your unique talent and ability that makes you special not to say that everyone isn't special, we're all special in some way because every one of us has a unique talent and ability. And as you get in touch with that, you're really in touch with your true self. And that's not to say you can't have money and you can't have status, but it will be a, a secondary feature to this because the thing that we do that we love is what makes us tick, it's what gives us energy, it's what keeps us alive, it, it, it's really our true goal. We are truly in spirit. We are in spirit when we're doing our Dharma. So Rudolf Noriev was a wonderful, uh, famous ballet star. And he said, work is sacred. The reason he said work is sacred is because when we are at work doing our Dharma, doing the thing that we resonate to, we lose time. We are in bliss and we are in service to humanity. So when he did his wonderful performances, he inspired everyone. Work is sacred, and that's what Dharma is talking about. There's another quote that I want to share with you about Dharma, and it's by the, the wonderful poet from the East, Khalil Gibran, in The Prophet. He said, when you work, you are like a flute, whose heart, through whose heart the whispering of the hours turn to music, and what is it to work with love? It is to weave the cloth with threads drawn from your heart, even as if your beloved were to wear the cloth. It's a beautiful statement because when we are working with the law of Dharma, when we are giving our true talent and abilities, we are in spirit and we are in love. We are in love. So Dharma is a Sanskrit word and that's the oldest language, and Sanskrit, uh, in Sanskrit it means your purpose, that we have a purpose. Everybody has a purpose, so everyone in the earth plane, no matter how lowly you might think of yourself or someone else, every person has a unique talent and ability that they are here to express. And when we get in touch with that, we are really expressing divine energy. It is coming through us. We are basically like a channel through which God can express, if you will. So what we want to do is look for what that thing is that we do where we lose time, where we can be so engrossed in it and so involved in it that we forget what time it is, that hours can go by, and we, we think it's minutes. And for some people, it's solving a mystery, and for somebody else, it might be painting a painting, and for someone else, it's working on a computer, and hours go by, and they don't even know what time it is or perhaps it's fixing something or inventing something, or maybe it's working with people on a team and you're on a project and you're so involved in it that you just are in bliss. So whatever your unique talent and ability is, the, the important thing to remember is not only is it, are you here to express it, but that the world needs it. So there is no one who has an ability that the world is not also asking for that ability. So there is a connection. There's a way to use this. So when you honor that, when you honor who you are and what your abilities are, then you attract wealth. Be why? Because you're in a state of bliss. And whenever you're in a high state of energy, you're going to attract all kinds of wonderful things. So we want to match our talent with the way we can serve. 
humanity and, and basically see a broader picture from that. And in so doing, we will be fulfilling the law of Dharma. So how do we do that? One thing we want to ask ourselves is, what is my unique talent? What, what are, maybe there's more than one, what are my unique talents? And write down the things that have come easy to you all your life, the things that maybe other people puzzle over, but for you it's no big deal. You can just do it without thinking practically. It just rolls out of you. What are your unique talents and abilities? Sometimes we tend to discount them because I've heard people say, well, I'm, I was a really great soccer star. And, and I led the team and I made the most goals and I just had so much fun and I loved it. If we look at that metaphorically, we'll recognize that being the soccer star, the, the essence of that was working on a team in a creative way, accomplishing something that had purpose, taking the team to a win or taking the team to um, a sense of victory, accomplishment, if you will, and working in conjunction with a group of people so that everybody was playing a part in that and, and becoming as one, then in essence what we're saying is that is our dharma, to work in a team creatively, to, to work and help and inspire and support each other so that an end result is accomplished. And when we do that, we can lose time. I had a, a, a student who was working on his passion, what is it? He did a meditation and asked for that. And what he got was to be a philanthropist. So what he did was he started his own foundation and his foundation he's working with mothers and children and helping them have a safe environment in which to live. So maybe doing repairs on the house or helping them with their gas bills in the wintertime or, or various things. But his foundation now is formed and he's accrued a team of people that he's working with that is, is fulfilling this purpose to be a philanthropist. And so he's very fulfilled and happy about that. He's so excited every time he tells me we were able to accomplish this or we did this, you know, in his, in his um, foundation. So that, so even being a philanthropist, he, when he first had that, when it, that first came to him, he thought, why, what, you know, how would that work, you know? And then when he just left his mind open, he began to see the pieces and he, he started contacting people and he realized, it just sort of came together in a, in a very smooth flow. It was a beautiful, it was a miracle for him. It was wonderful. So basically, there are three parts to this law of dharma. One part is, what is your unique talent? Uh, what are they? There might be just a number. And what is the best way for me to give that to the world? And how can I serve? So when we put those three parts together, we arrive at a fulfillment of the law of Dharma. So each one of us is on a quest. We're on a quest to discover our true self. And part of what our true self is really about is our pure expression of energy. When we were children, we were passionate. We express passionately. If we were playing, we express passionately in our, in our play. And I've heard of people telling me that when they were children, they built playhouses, they built tree houses. Every time they built one, they would look around and how to make it better. And so later on in their life, it was not a big shock for them to go into the building professions or to the design or architecture because from the time they were children, this passion was there showing up. So that they, all they had to do is really follow that and, and they found a way to be in timelessness with their profession. Um, that is our spiritual self, by the way. That, that quest to understand what's deep within us, what that drive is, that is our spiritual self. And the more we connect with it and, and make peace with it and accept it, the more that we can be in love every single day of our life. You are a spiritual being and you're hanging out in a physical body. And there's a purpose for that. Basically what it comes down to, you're having, you're a spiritual being, a spiritual energy, if you will, having a human experience. And you're on a quest. We're all on a quest. Some people call it a heroic quest. Sometimes it seems heroic because we're trying to walk, work through a lot of the ideas we were taught growing up that are so against this idea of Dharma. And yet it's our job, it's our purpose to work through all that and, and peel away the, the things that aren't, in, aren't aligned with who we are and move forward into our, a, a true state of Dharma. So we all have unique talents, we all have unique abilities, and we all have amazing ways to express them. 
ways to express those abilities that no one in the world can do but you. You are the one. And what we want to do, our ego gets in the way and it says, oh yeah, but I'm not that great. And that's just a lie that you've told yourself. So ultimately we have to change that and look at the truth that we don't want to listen to the ego. We don't want to let the ego talk us out of our thing, uh, of what's our right, if you will, what's the fulfillment of who we are. And the ego will try to down you and say, no, everybody else has a purpose, but not you. And it could be as simple as I said earlier about doing hairdressing and, and your energy is what helps your, your clients. Um, so whatever, if, where do you feel the most energy? Where do you feel like you're really connected with who you are? That's, that's the best use of the law of Dharma. One way that you can get in touch and, and really start working toward this understanding is to use meditation. Because meditation is a way that we enter the spirit, the, we enter spirit. We enter that domain of spirit and we learn how to be quiet and listen. And so what we want to do is allow spirit to talk to us. Like this man that I just told you about, spirit said, you're a philanthropist. And by listening to that, by listening to that, um, he was able to take the steps to move forward. And isn't it amazing how simple those steps were and how easy he was able to connect with the right people to make all that happen. So spirit will help you. It's always there to help you, but we have to learn to listen to it. Meditation is the way we learn how to do that. So the first commitment you want to make to yourself is to seek your higher self, your higher being, your higher essence, your higher energy. We want to seek that. Meditation is a way that we begin to do that. We get beyond personality. We get beyond beliefs and behaviors and we enter the, the, the sphere of pure energy. And that's when we can begin to connect. The second um, commitment is to really consider your unique talents. So look at your life and go, what through my whole life, from the time I was a child, what were those things that came to me so easy? And begin to make lists and put that together because in time you'll begin to see it as an energy more than a performance. You'll see it as, um, an energy you were expressing, you know, to, to do math, to, to make accounts, to, to settle a ledger. That was something that came so naturally to me. And then you might put that together with something else and pretty soon you've got the whole picture of how it works. But this is your quest and only you can do it. I can't do it for you. No one can do it for you. And then when you are able to see that those talents in, in, the, in my connection with spirit is the way I do service, is the way I perform service, is the way I give to the world, then you're, you're there. You're, you're in that state of Dharma. So it's a state of bliss that we want to achieve. It, we have a right to it. Um, what am I best suited for? And the way I've always known to get in touch with my deeper self is to ask questions. Because once you ask questions, you get answers. And the questions are as simple. You know, what is it I'm really good at? What am I here to do for the world? And how can I serve? Those are questions. What is my deepest passion? How can I live my passion? And we have all had passion in our life. We've all done things that we were so happy about. Sometimes we think it's just winning the trophy, but it wasn't winning the trophy. It was doing it in conjunction with a team. It was putting out your best performance. It was the discipline it took to, to establish that kind of talent. So it was a lot of different things that helped you get there. So you, it's not a matter of winning trophies every day. It's a matter of, of reclaiming that spirit that it took to, to create the trophy in the first place. Um, the, so you begin with the meditation and with asking yourself questions. When you ask questions to yourself, what happens is your mind starts giving you answers. When you meditate, the answers can come that way because probably that's the time of your day when you're most still. A wonderful way to do that too is just to get in nature. It's really hard to have all that chatter going on in our mind when we're in nature. When we're in nature, we quiet down, we still ourselves. And oftentimes that's when the answers will come. But then again, look at your life and go, where is, when I'm, what am I doing that when I jump out of bed in the morning, I could hardly wait to get there? Or another way to ask the question is, if money were not an issue, um, if time were not an issue, what would I be doing right now? And your heart will lead you try, right to it because your heart right now knows the answer to that question. 
and that's what true success is. That's the law of Dharma. Putting the law of Dharma or purpose into life. You know, today I will lovingly nurture the God or Goddess within me that is in every single person. There's nobody that doesn't have it. You cannot be living without that. It's what supplies your life. And you will be cultivating present moment awareness. <clears throat> in other words, the only way you can actually be aware of the God or Goddess within you is to be in this moment. <clears throat> If you're in the past or if you're in the future, you're not going to notice the God or Goddess within you. You're not going to see that divine energy coming through you. And you will give, lovingly and willingly give attention to the spirit within you that animates your body, your life, your mind. It animates you. You might think that you're a separate being and God's someplace else, the universe is someplace else, but the universe flows through you to animate you. And that's the only way it works. And I will listen to the deep stillness within my being and carry the consciousness of timelessness and divine being into all of my relationships and experiences. I will take that with me. I will know that what I truly am is divine being. That's the energy of who I am. That's everything. That's everything. I will formulate a list of my talents and abilities and I'll, I will express myself through these talents and abilities and I'll expand myself through these talents and abilities and I will strive to be joyful in service at all times. And even though we think, well, it's just this grocery store clerk, we're in service. If we encourage that one being and they go home and encourage the beings at home, we've created a ripple effect and it gets bigger and bigger. And that's how we create abundance in our life. And I will question myself, how can I be of service? And what, may, what way may I help today in this situation? And there will always be answers to that. And listen to that divine guidance within, and you'll always have the direction. Always. If people feel like they don't, aren't living a meaningful life, it's because they're not thinking of what they do as a giving exercise. But we're, if we think about what we do, we're always giving. As we express ourselves, we give. We think too much about, what am I going to get back from this? Then we, we forget that we're actually giving when we just give spontaneously and freely, then, then it just automatically comes back. But if we're thinking, now, for this I'm going to get paid this much money, it doesn't work. When you go to do your job, your service, just do it. And then think about getting paid later. It'll, you'll always get paid. <laughs> you'll always get paid. But don't think about your pay while you're doing the service.